Lesson 9.4 Line Graphs A line graph is a graph that uses line segments to show how data changes over time. We can use a line graph to display and analyze real-world data. The series of numbers placed at fixed distances that label the graph are the graph's scale. Here we have a scale in degrees Fahrenheit. Here we have a scale in time, in hours. The interval or difference between one number and the next on the scale should be equal. We start at 0. We go to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So there's a difference of 10 between each of these degrees. And here there's a difference of one hour between each of these. So the intervals have the same amount of difference between each number. See? 10 between these and one hour between these. We can organize the data in related pairs. We choose a title, labels, an interval and scale for the graph. We plot the points from the related pairs. We draw line segments to connect the consecutive points. We write related number pairs of data as ordered pairs. We learned about that in video 9.2 and it's linked in the description. So here we've got recorded temperature in this table and it shows the time in AM, that's morning at 1 AM, 2 AM, 3 AM, 4 AM and the temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit. This little symbol is degree and the F is for Fahrenheit. We can see at 1 a.m. it's 44 degrees, at 2 a.m. it's 42, at 3 a.m. it's 40 degrees, and at 4 a.m. it's 42 degrees. We can write them as X, Y values, and we can write them as ordered pairs. For the vertical axis right here, we choose a scale and interval that are appropriate for the data. We show a break in the scale right here between 0 and 40 since there are no temperatures between 0 and 40. We make a zigzag, see how it comes out, comes in, and then comes back to the orange line going up. That zigzag line break is to save space. Otherwise, we'd have 10, 20, and 30 here and there's no information for 10, 20, 30, so we can just save space and put this zigzag line break. We can see it goes 40, 42, 44, 46. For the horizontal axis, we write the times of the day. We write a title up here for the graph and name each axis. We name this one temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit and this one time for AM for the morning. Then we graph the ordered pairs and we complete the graph by connecting the points with line segments. And we can easily see from the graph that the lowest temperature was at 3 o'clock AM. It's where it went down and then it started heading back up to get warmer again, didn't it? For five days, Emma collected data on the total rainfall in her town with a rain gauge. Here's a rain gauge right here, and it's marked with measures and the water, the rain falls inside, and it slowly collects, and you can see the measures. And she read the amount of rain collected in the rain gauge each day and did not pour it out. And she recorded her data in a table. So here she's got the days, and here she's got the rain in inches. Now notice it says she did not pour it out. So Monday it's showing one inch, and Tuesday it's showing two inches, but that includes the one inch from Monday. And Wednesday includes Monday and Tuesday's rain, and Thursday includes Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Wednesday's rain, etc. And we can make a line graph to display Emma's data. We write the ordered pairs from her table of data. Monday was 1, Tuesday is 2, Wednesday is 4, Thursday is 5, Friday is 6. We choose a scale and interval that fits the data. So because it's going 1, 2, and then 4, 5, 6, we can have our rainfall in inches go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we'll have, because the lowest amount is 1, 
and the highest is 6, our scale is from 0 to 7. And the measures are in whole inches, so our interval is 1. There's 1 inch between each of the numbers on the scale. And we label the x-axis and y-axis. This is rainfall in inches. This is days. We give the line graph a title. It's rainfall collected. You can see that up here. And we graph the ordered pairs and connect the points with line segments. So here we've got the days, and Monday is 1. So we put a point here. Tuesday was at a 2, so that's at 2 with Tuesday. Wednesday jumped to 4, so we go to 4 on Wednesday. Thursday is 5, so that's at a 5. And Friday is at 6, that's at 6. We connect them with line segments between the points. We can see that there was more rain between Tuesday and Wednesday than the other days. See how it went up two units? If it did not rain on Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, the line segments would be horizontal to show no change in the amount of rainfall. If it rained one inch on Monday, but then it didn't rain for Tuesday, it would just go straight across and stay at 1. For Wednesday, it must have rained because now her rain gauge is filled up to 3. And if it stays at 3, that means it didn't rain Thursday or Friday. Any location on a line segment that is between two points would be an estimate and not an exact answer. Our line graph shows three inches between, when it's halfway between Tuesday and Wednesday. And since the data was recorded only once each day, it may have rained right after the data was recorded or right before Wednesday, unless the rain was steady and continuous. So this place right here on this line segment, that would be an estimate and even between Monday and Tuesday, this place right here on the line segment, that would be an estimate. And in between here would be an estimate, and in between here would be an estimate. Because it's being recorded only where the points are. We don't know what happened in the middle of the day. An overlay graph uses two vertical scales. This one's got one on the left for precipitation in inches and one on the right for temperature in degree Fahrenheit. And this overlay graph shows monthly average precipitation, which means moisture in rain, snow, like dew, etc., for a town. An overlay graph helps us see more information. We can see the precipitation, the temperature, and the month at the same time. And notice the zeros. There's a zero here and there's a zero here are for the vertical scales. They're not for the months. We don't have a zero month. It's showing the key down here that these blue bars are for the precipitation and that the line segment with the two points, that is the temperature. And we learned in the last few videos that an ordered pair would be x values and y values. And do you notice for our data, we've got an x value of a month, like January, February, or March, and then our y value is a number. For this one, our ordered pairs were days of the week and a number. So our related pairs are going to depend on the data we have. Our next lesson, 9.5, we're going to talk about numerical patterns and the relationship between two numerical patterns. Have a wonderful day. I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.